great so hello everyone we have uh, anugrah satya with us so uh, he is a social entrepreneur and a, a, a public speaker and also game developer of course and you you need to know more about him like he's also he has a great portfolio i will also share his uh, zoom in so you can check him out his work so uh, also without uh, wasting any further time anugrah can start So thank you for having me. Uh, hello everybody. I am Anukre. I am 20 right now. I'll be turning 21 next week. Uh, so for this session, we will be learning about the basics of like introduction about the gaming industry. What is happening in the gaming industry? Before I get into that, I would like to tell you guys a brief about myself. Why am I the speaker here? Why am I the? Why am uh, giving you this session? Why am I taking this session? And what have been my journey, etc. So uh, ever since I was very young, I wanted to build things. I wanted to build things that people could use in their day-to-day -day life. So I started teaching myself how to code, how to build things. And I used the world's largest university, that is YouTube, to teach myself how to code, how to build things, etc. Uh, I started by making small projects like home automation system, automatic irrigation system, etc. I made many more projects like that. And at a certain point, I got so good at building things that I started giving workshops to people in the ninth grade. So young professionals, people from IITs attended those uh, workshops. We gave five to six workshops every like six months. And I, along with, the, uh, with three friends, started this initiative. So that was the start of my entrepreneurship journey. And that was just to earn some uh, passive income, have some basic income. That is why we started. That was the main motive of those workshops. Later on, I built a project named Apex Band. So Apex Band was a bracelet and a band, uh, which could let you control your home appliances or your uh, any other appliances just by your gestures. So it was a brand band, a wristband, which, which had some sensors in it, which could detect your uh, gestures and could help you uh, control your appliances in your home. So for example, uh, if I click my fingers, the band would get activated. And when the band is activated, I could just do this uh, gesture. And the like, if I want to in increase the volume of the television, I could do this gesture and the uh, volume would be increased uh, from the television. Similarly, you can control your AC, uh, your air conditioning, your fans, etc. We also included a feature for women's safety where if a, a woman is in any emergency, she could just click and do a certain gesture to call the police uh, at her particular location. So that was the project that I made. I took that project to one of India's biggest innovation fairs and I ended up winning that innovation fair. Later on, government of India also uh, uh, awarded me for that project and university uh, the project got noticed by University of Toronto and they called me to University of Toronto in Canada uh, to attend their deep program. And I was the only Indian to go there in 2016. So that was the initial journey. Then later on, I built a project named IQ. That is EYE-Q. It was made for the visually impaired. So what, what that project was, it was a headset with a camera attached to it. So whenever a visually impaired a person needed to know what is happening in front of him, they just tap the uh, headset, the voice would get activated and the, like, if, if, for example, I'm using that headset, I would just say, I just tap on the headset and I'd say, IQ, what is happening in front of me? So IQ will capture the image, analyze it in the headset, and then let me know what is happening in front of me through the oral feedback, the earphones plugged into the visually, uh, visual impaired person. So for example, if I say IQ, what is happening in front of me, it would capture an image and tell me that a laptop is in front of me. So that was the project that, that that has been my favorite projects over the years. I've worked on many projects and because that was particularly my favorite project because I know what uh, what particularly a visually impaired person wants. And it, it was really special to see some of the reactions for those uh, visually impaired people. So I made that project. I made a prototype of that. Obviously, to scale that up, we needed a lot of money. I didn't uh, pursue that making into a product, but that was a prototype. I took that prototype to one of India's leading innovation summit. I presented it there, and I it, it, the, the event had more than 500 CEOs, UXOs from all across the globe. And uh, one of like people were very impressed when I showed IQ. One of those people was so impressed that they uh, they approached me and they wanted me to build solutions for autism spectrum disorder. So 
I'll I'll take all of your questions. Just let me complete for like 10, 15 minutes. Then we can have an interactive session. Uh, I'll uh, answer all of your questions. Yeah. So that gentleman who offered me to build solutions for autism spectrum disorder uh, also offered me a monetary amount to build those solutions. And I was 17 back then. And uh, the idea of building things where which could be used by people and which could be which could help people. And I will also be getting a monetary benef benefit from it. That seemed like the perfect idea for me. And that's that I, I thought that will fulfill my monetary needs as well and will help me uh, achieve my goal of help, helping people. So that led to the start of hybrid idea. Uh, that was my first venture. Uh, hybrid, hybrid idea started as India's first assistive technology solution design company. We made a team of 15 people where we brainstormed on how we can assist the lives of uh, specially able people. We made projects every weekend. We tried to uh, make those projects for the visually uh, for the specially able people and assist the those assistants uh, assisted assistive technology products. Uh, we made we continued this for like eight to nine months. Then we later on pivoted and we positioned ourselves into a global social technology and an IT services firm, wherein we uh, currently develop solutions for nonprofit, social enterprises, and other organizations to help them achieve scale for their impact. Uh, through technology. So we are working with various clients, like one of our clients is Janajal, which is one of the leading social enterprises of India. And we were, for, for the work that we have done, we were featured by Forbes. We were also named, like I was also named one of the top 10 change, change makers of the country uh, by Ashoka. Ashoka is the world's largest nonprofit. So this was the initial journey. So while, uh, so while I was making these projects, uh, I came across gaming uh, that was used for education. So that was the main idea for me. Uh, that the, that was the main aha moment for me. As in, just yeah. So as as all my life, I have seen parents uh, keeping their kids away from gaming, right? So that was the main part. Like people were using gamification and games to teach. Uh, students to uh, for education and this was back in uh, 2016 2017 when Geo, even geo wasn't released and that was happening in india so uh, that that really surprised me that if game if the game design fundamentals are used in such a way uh, where we could like gamify the education for people then game 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 design fundamentals could be used in a lot of ways and that could be better than traditional uh, I'll answer every question. Just let me complete once. Yeah. So yeah. So that that was the main aha moment for me. Uh, so we decided. So seeing that we decided to make a game as one of the solutions for autism spectrum disorder, and that was my main touch point with gaming. Later, one year later, or I, I don't remember the exact timeline, but six to eight months later, I I met a friend who used to get, uh, develop games independently. And we were just start, uh, chatting about some game ideas that would be nice if they could be implemented. So while I'm on that call, the uh, I had an idea of a game which we both could, like we thought that uh, if we make that game, it could end up being a really nice game. So we uh, started developing the game and uh, got the proof of concept for that game ready. We then pitched it to various organizations to have the initial feedback. Later on, we spent like five to six months uh, developing that game, building that game. And we were able to partner with the publisher to help us achieve scale for that game. So surprisingly, our game also got the notice of and the interest of Snapchat. Uh, I hope everybody knows Snap Inc. and Snapchat. Uh, how many of us know Bitmoji? Can you all raise your hands? Okay, so for all of those who don't know Bitmoji, let me. Oh, uh, you're not audible. For those who don't know Bitmoji, after that, uh, I can't hear you. Am I audible now? Yeah, 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 now. Cool, cool, cool. Got it, got it. So I guess only. Uh, 15 to 20 people know Bitmoji. Let me just share my screen and show you guys what Bitmoji really is. Yeah, so 
So this is Bitmoji, which is used in Snapchat. It's a 3D avatar of yourself in like, you can use your 3D avatar in Snapchat to represent yourself and to express yourself. So how do I stop sharing the screen? So we were the first studio, we got in touch with Snapchat and we were the first studio uh, to implement uh, Bitmoji. We like one of the first studios in the world to implement Bitmoji in a game. So you could play as yourself in a game. So if you have a 3D avatar made, you can play as yourself uh, in our particular game. So we partnered with Snapchat and they wanted our game to be Bitmoji exclusive. So we ended up partnering with them and we were, like I said, we were one of the first studios from all across the globe to have Bitmojis in our game. So this led to the start of my second initiative that is Serenico Labs. Uh, we are now positioned as a gaming and interactive solutions company, wherein we work across the spectrum of developing casual games, gamification solutions, gamification for training, brand campaigns, etc. We are a team of, a team of 10 people right now. Uh, six of them are full-time and uh, four of them are part-time and we are aggressively hiring right now. So uh, why did I get into gaming? I was having my own initiative and why did I get into gaming and why you all should too? So gaming has been a hidden industry in India and probably in the world too. If you look at the market worldwide, gaming is bigger than music industry and the film industry and not individually, but combined. And most of us don't know that. And not just that gaming is also growing at a rate, which is making it one of the highest growing industries. And it, it has it, it has a revenue of, I guess, uh, expected to reach by $300 billion by 2025 and is currently standing at like $37 billion. So you can calculate the rate of growth that will be there in like just five years. On the other hand, if you take a look at the nationwide market, uh, gaming has just started uh, to penetrate in India, thanks to Jio, uh, thanks to the penetration of internet all across India. Uh, the Indian gaming industry is projected to reach an estimated $3 billion by the uh, year to 2025, uh, which will be a growth of like 300% in five years. Uh, and that is a great growth for an industry. And in my personal opinion, it can all also grow much more if, if the penetration of internet is uh, at a much higher rate. And in my personal opinion, gaming being the only interactive media, uh, it has endless possibilities to grow. Uh, the interactive experience that gaming delivers, even the movies or the films that the, or the music uh, that you play or that you watch cannot deliver because it, it is a two-way interaction in games and that opens up huge opportunities for brands to advertise. So if brands are advertising, uh, the industry will be very big. But how do you start? So you need to firstly identify which role would be suited the best for you. Uh, so an ideal game, game development team consists of uh, like four roles. The first is game designer. Uh, the game designer is the first role that any game development team needs. The role of a game designer is largely like lies on a huge spectrum. It is not a particular role. So the major, the major role of a game designer is to make a game design document, also known as GDD. And GDD is considered as a Bible of a game. So everything about a game. Yeah. I'll be taking your questions. Yeah. Okay. So like GDD includes everything about a game. It includes from the game idea, level design, game mechanics, game controls. How will the game look? What will be the art style be like? Who will be the target audience? Who, what will be the user acquisition like, etc. And a, game, a, a role of game design is very crucial for a game team because, and it, and it is also similar to a role of project manager or a game manager or a game lead because game designer is the one who approves everything kind of in many teams and uh, has the main idea of how will the game look. The salary of a game designer in India generally starts from four lakhs per annum and could reach up to 20 lakhs per annum depending on the experience that you have. Second, that a, a, a game development team needs is an artist. So there is a difference between a designer and an artist. Designer designs the game in a document format, defines the controls, defines the mechanic, defines the game idea. Uh, artist is the one that creates 3D models, animations, visual effects, environments inside of the game to be used in the games. 
so many 3d artists also work in physical locations like offices but 3d artist is a role uh, that i personally feel could also be pursued remotely and the major softwares that are used in uh, used by 3d artists are like blender maya 3ds uh, max zbrush etc the tools don't really matter if you are a beginner uh, that the, all of those tools are really similar uh, if you want to get into art firstly but if you want to get into art as a beginner i would personally suggest you to uh, choose blender because blender is a free to free tool and even if you are interning at a startup or trying to move uh, uh, like work in one uh, they generally prefer to work on free tools before upgrading uh, to the paid ones because of the budget constraints and the salary range of a 3d artist generally lies between 2 lakhs per annum to 12 lakhs per annum so the third one is game programmer so the main like one of the most crucial role of a game dev team is of a game programmer so a game programmer is someone who writes the code that brings the video game to life so uh, they work closely with producers other departments like game design departments uh, animation department if if there if there's a team of working on animation sound department etc uh, the, the game programmer works with those departments to translate the project's vision into a playable game or a fully functional game they generally code in c c sharp or javascript depending on the game that is being currently made so generally uh, unity uses c sharp, c sharp uh, so generally people prefer to start with that the main engines used for game development is as i said unity unreal cocos etc but if you are working at a triple a studio like uh, if you are working at rockstar games or a big studio they generally have their own engines and so to be adaptive with them you need to be thoroughly clear with the oops concept in your programming if you guys if any of you is a programmer here and the generally uh, salary lies between 4 lakh per annum to like 22 lakhs per annum in india uh, that is what i have seen in uh, through my experience if you uh, work for like 6 7 years and if you are done being a game programmer you uh, are promoted to a managerial position where you uh, manage a big team and you are not just a game programmer then, then you are a manager so uh, the salary gets increases there so what are the types of games how many types of games there are many many types of games but to keep it short i will bifurcate it into three parts the first is hyper casual games these games are generally made in like a prototype of these games can just be made in one week only and if you want to make a full game they can easily be made around in one month only so how many of us have played flappy word here nine participants 12 okay so out of 123 only 14 people have played flappy word can you raise your hand if you have played it nice 25 so let me just share my screen and show you guys some hyper casual games to give you an idea about them. so what this game is called sky roller what you have to do is just swerve your fingers on the screen to uh, stretch the legs of the player and then you have to position it accordingly to the obstacles in front so this is the perfect example of a hyper hyper casual game this game if this i perhaps this game's prototype would have been made in like 5 to 6 days only more content to the game they could just take complete the game in within like one month so i would like to ask you guys uh, for an approximate idea of how many downloads does this game have according to you guys half a million two million okay 100k one million 10 million okay 100k 50k 2000 okay so what if i tell you that this game which is made in just like one month has over 100 million plus downloads it has over 100 downloads in just like six to eight months this is the power of hyper casual games. this is the power of casual gaming 
because uh, generally players play it for like five to six minutes, and the model of these games are to include ads in the game. So if like uh, if to, to acquire users, I spend around like zero point three dollars to acquire one user, and then when the user is acquired, I show them ads on the game, and I collect like I get a revenue of zero point four or zero point five uh, dollars per 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 like person. So you can calculate uh, how much revenue does this game have actually. So for example, like what I guess is how many, uh, like how much would this game have earned? Mm, yes, I guess, all right. Yes, I guess. No, not a billion, come on, please. Two million, okay, 50 million. Two rupees, okay. In crores. Though the best I will know, it is very hard to have a game like this, uh, which is a hit. It is very hard to acquire customers. It is very hard to position a game like this in the market because the competition is extremely, extremely high because the games are very easy to make. But uh, if there are like if the games are easy to make, obviously there are many developers uh, trying to have a hit like this. So according to me, I don't have the exact numbers of this game. According to me, or from my assumption, at least this game would have had profits, not revenue, profit over $15 million, according to me. So this is called a freemium model, where in you show ads in the games and then uh, earn by that. Second uh, comes casual gaming, which is not purely hyper casual like I showed you guys. It's a, it is much more uh, advanced. Generally, the development time of casual games is around six months to years, depending on the game. So uh, let me show you some examples of a casual game to make you understand better. So this is the kind of game. These are story based games. Uh, you cannot just play it for five minutes and you'll be bored with it because the content is very huge in these games, generally depending on the game, though uh, the, the retention generally in hyper casual games, like the main LTV or the main life cycle of a customer in hyper casual games is, is for seven days. But in these games, it can uh, be up to six months, one year or more than that, up depending on the game. Generally, the, the business model of these games, uh, these games are generally called as premium games, wherein you don't show ads in these games. What you do is we you have items in, the, in these games to buy. Like if I am a customer, I could buy some items to use the, uh, those items in my game. So for example, everybody has played Fortnite or PUBG, right? So when you buy skins, that is how PUBG earns. So this is a similar example of that. The third type of games are AAA games. So everybody must be knowing AAA games. Uh, AAA games, they take many, many years to make. MMOs, yeah, MMOs are massive multiplayer, correct? Uh, so AAA games like take years and years to make. GTA takes like six to seven years to make one game. Uh, recently, Cyberpunk 2077 took like nine years to make and the game got popped because it had a huge amount of bugs in that game. So generally, uh, the development time of these games are, these games cannot be made in just one year. These, these games take years and years to build. And some of the examples are GTA, Bully, Thief, uh, uh, Call of Duty. So you guys know what I'm into. Like you guys have all heard about Call of Duty, etc. So I'll not get much, much into that. Yeah, so how to earn money from games? So according to me, if you are in school or if you are in college, you can earn money from games, no doubt. Uh, like I see a very bright future of uh, young talent earning from games 
uh, because they know what the market wants. They have the ability to understand what the market wants. If I am a 50 year old, I won't know what the customer wants, what the Gen Z wants. But if I am 18, 19, I know what's trending in the market. I, I could develop one game and I could have a hit. So there are two ways according to me by which you can earn uh, by developing games. First is making your own games and then publishing into the market. But the scope of earning a huge amount from this is very low because uh, you have to try out like your first game wouldn't be a hit. That's for sure. You have to make around 15 to 20, 10 to 15 games initially. And after that, perhaps your games will start earning. The second model is if you are good in Unity or if you are good in like 3D art or designing, what you could do is you could provide your services to startups which are in need because many, many startups are hiring for freelancers or interns. You could provide your services to them, earn money, build a team of like one 3D artist or one designer and work on games, so your separate games as well. So you could start your own studio as well and you could earn money as well. So you won't have to just try out pushing your games and wasting your energy. You could also provide services to other companies, earn and then put that money into other games as well. So that is what we how we work as well. We are in collaboration with many companies. We also work on a services model and we also release our own games as well. So till now uh, for hyper casual games, we have had around more than 1 million plus downloads till now. And you can also have a hyper casual studio. Generally what we do is we try out like five to six games per month. We make a prototype in like one week. We test it out in the market. If the game is working well, we iterate on it. If the game is not working well, we just dump the game and uh, move on to the next project. So that is how easy it is to, not easy, I won't say it easy, but the development uh, time is very fast in hyper casual games and you all can start with hyper casual, uh, casual games as well. And if you are looking to uh, find a way uh, to start in hyper casual, we are hiring for interns, junior developers and senior developers in our company. The interns is not, not just for uh, game development. Uh, it is on uh, across various spectrum. We are hiring also hiring for social media. We are hiring uh, artists. We are also hiring designers. Similarly, we are hiring junior uh, developers and senior developers as well. So if anyone of you have any experience in game design, game development, or even social media, you can get in touch and then we can uh, see how we can move further. I think that is it from my side. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, ask right now. I think this is the time. Uh, so uh, anyone who has to ask question, maybe you can uh, raise your hand. Then I can give you the prompts to unmute. I'll ask you to unmute. Also, it will be great if you turn on your camera to become more interactive. I see Shubham's hand raised. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll uh, ask. Sir, means that we are like that Python is a new era of programming languages other than C and C++. Is there any chances that Python be a more suitable language for gaming? Yeah, so Python has a framework named a Pi game. You can develop basic games from that, but if you want to get into like hardcore gaming or even if you want to have some nice games, I recommend Python to you. You can use Python to make like basic games, but generally what is used uh, in the industry is C sharp uh, that is used in Unity. Even though you can game make games with Python, but that isn't recommended from my side because it isn't widely used and the support is very less as well in the market. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, many people have been like, asking in chat, so can you like raise your hand then you can ask by asking. Yeah. Uh, Volt, you can unmute. Hello, sir. Uh, is there uh, that Unity and that programming thing are different or uh, they are same? Can you come again? Yeah, that uh, suppose the, that C++, it's a programming language, right? Right. Yeah, and Unity is a, I would suppose, like it's a game development platform. Correct. Is that is there any link between them? You know. Yeah. yeah. So so like Unity is a proper game engine. You can like they they have made many things easy for you. So you don't have to hard code physics of a particular game. What you could do is you could use that engine, code some of it. Uh, you don't have to code the, your physics from scratch. Uh, you can import 3D models. You don't have to hard code everything. So it's a particular engine. And in that engine, you code in C-sharp. Oh, some people have been asking best language for game in chat. So if, if you are like a beginner, I would suggest you to learn C-sharp. 
if you are uh, like clear with the oops fundamental it it will be very easy for you to uh, c sharp because c sharp i am particularly saying c sharp because generally uh, industry wide that has the most demand currently and i think the demand of that will be increasing hugely in the next few years so even if you have to make some basic games you can make a game in like 4 days using c sharp and even if you don't know c sharp you could take up a project learn while doing that project if you are clear with the oops fundamentals you will be easily able to also adapt c sharp so if any one of you knows java or javascript it is very similar there there are fun, uh, syntax differences but it is very easy to adapt if you are a beginner uh, if you want to make s5 games html games or other you can also use html or javascript for that but in my suggestion if you want to make mobile app games then you should uh, start with c sharp um and some people are asking like minimum uh, specifications for the pc and how much you should invest in the device uh, i don't if, if you are not making very like high high end games i don't think uh, you need a pc of like 1 lakh or you don't need to in, invest 80000 even if you have a uh, laptop which has i5 or i3 uh, it has a good generation if, if you have a good ram uh it could be uh, workable but if you want to get uh, deep into it you could uh, you obviously have to have a, a nice graphic card uh, which would let you like uh, help you more easily to make that game so for, uh, initially it doesn't matter which laptop you have initially you can use whatever laptop to you have to learn games but if you are getting hard hard into it it will be good if you have some uh, a, a nice graphic card uh, uh, graphics in your uh, laptop or your device Oh uh, yeah, Shubham. Also, again, I have one question. Like that, offline games we play without internet. Like that one Google Chrome, we have Dino, so we play it when we do not have internet. So how the how can we earn the revenue if that on offline game comes online for a certain period of time without playing any ads or any other relative things inside the game while playing? so generally there are three models generally there are two main models the first is the freemium one second is the premium one you need internet for both of them uh, so if if you do not have internet it's very hard to earn uh, from those games so that is why they, that is a major reason why big companies haven't ventured into india because the spending power is also low and generally people switch off their internet or they do not have internet to play games uh so first is the freemium model you can show ads second is the model where in you can sell items of that game but for that for both of them you need internet but there is a third model that is coming into the market wherein you have a game you collaborate with a brand so for example i am making a, a racing game i collaborate with maruti so what i can do is i can use maruti's logo in my game Mar- maruti could pay me a certain amount right and when if even if i am playing offline i would still be seeing maruti's logo right so that would be a form of advertisement for them so this is a model that has been em- uh, emerging recently but it hasn't been uh, like it isn't in the mainstream right now because it's very hard to include the brand's uh, philosophy or the brand's presence into the games right now but i think in the later years we will find a way for that and that could be a could potentially be a business or a revenue model for games and that could be huge uh, because if you have brands in games that that could be that could have a huge opportunity for brands and developers as well thank you uh lokesh uh, hello sir so i am a mechanical engineer i am uh, currently taking up uh, java language sir okay so i think uh, after two year, two months uh, i may complete my course so what to do next how to get into uh, this gaming development side right so what do you want to get into do you want to become a 3d r do you want to game uh, become a designer do you want to get into programming what do you want to do a designer sir designer so uh, to make a designer i would suggest you you should intern in a company because uh, or you could take up a course i won't suggest the course particularly you the best way to learn design is to like practically work on some games and uh, the best opportunity that you could get for it is working or interning in a startup or a working want so i would suggest you to uh, work in a gaming company even if you're working for free that doesn't matter because initially if you want to uh, become a designer you need to learn the basic fundamentals of design uh, what is the control working in the market what is the storyline that generally work you you would learn all of this while working in a startup 
if course that is in back to you can also take up a course for that and then perhaps go on to uh, interning at a startup and then you could be paid as well but these two ways that you i think you should be approaching right now if you do not know anything about uh, this thank you hello hello uh, hello sir i am moderate in c++ so can you suggest some good resources to la- to learn and start into a web de- uh, game development sure sure so there is a channel named brackies uh, let me just share the link for all of you so i think this is the best platform if you are a beginner to learn uh, get into game development courses of like all of you and uh, the the person who is running this game development for like 12 years and he teaches very well so you can uh you can refer to this channel and learn from here or you could take up a course as i said earlier i won't suggest the course paid course right now you should first learn something yourself and then go for a paid course and what tools to learn uh, what tools you can learn you can start by learning uh, unity if you uh, you are moderate in c++, uh, c++ you said right yes yes are you clear with the oops concept yes i am clear with the oops con- concept i am practicing some data structure question this days okay yeah you can definitely look into c sharp then if you are clear with the oops concept yeah bracky is left i know but there are thousands of videos you can use to learn it. yeah so anyway to answer your question c sharp is the one uh, you can use start by making unity uh, you can use unity as a first your first game engine and use c sharp as a language in it uh thora ट a uh, very high end pc it, if you have a pc that is around in the range of 40 to 50000 or 30 to 40000 even i think that can could be uh, useful but if you want to know the exact specifications i think you should google it once because i am not updated with the uh, current specifications of the that 3d uh, software is used currently hello sir Uh, can you tell if python is still is relevant in the gaming industry or is it allowed to use i don't think python is uh, generally used in gaming industries because the type of games that are being made uh, that are in mainstream gaming don't use python uh, python isn't made specifically for gaming so i won't uh, suggest you to use that uh, language for uh making games but if you want to make small games there is a software name like a framework name py game you can use that and make small games but if you want to get into full fledged game development i suggest you to like learn c c sharp etc that would be a good way to get into game development thank you sir hello 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 yes um i'm going to start with the college next month like admission processes are going on right now and we are doing cs engineering so i wanted to know this field like as i don't know really anything about these fields so i just want to explore them if i am uh, and to know whether i am interested in these or not so where should i look so you can first try out some games if you like playing games i think everybody could be interest, interested in developing some games if you are a cs major and if you want to get into development as i shared the resources you can have a look at them but uh, i are you like do you are you interested in designing some games or would you be interested in uh, specifically 
making art models of a game like if you could create say your own model uh, your own mod- 3d model uh, in a particular game does that something like that interests you kind of okay so if that interests you you can have a on uh, or a workshop on 3d art uh, if making games or designing games as in uh, thinking what would be a game look like so if you have a high idea and you want to implement a particular game you could get into game design because the role of game design is to have an idea think of the mechanics so what you could do is have a 3d artist working with you or a programmer working with you and the one dictating what will look like so if you have a vision of a game you want to build that game you wouldn't have to uh, code it or you wouldn't have to make it for that uh, and if you think you really want to make that game then you can or could also pursue uh, designing so those are uh, like but you would have to check them out on videos and to filter out your but i generally think if anyone can be a game designer game designer is the best thing to start uh, because everybody wants to play games everybody wants to think of games so if you have an idea in your mind you can definitely uh, have some code take some courses for game and have a try at at that okay thank you hello sir hi sir what is crypto games and how to become a blockchain game developer sir uh to be honest i haven't uh, been into crypto gaming uh, crypto game crypto gaming is under thing uh, blockchain gaming i haven't uh, looked into it and i don't think it's coming any time in india though it has a huge potential in the future in uh, worldwide but i i personally we at serenico labs haven't worked at a uh, blockchain game so i won't be the right person to Uh, have an opinion on that or tell you something about that so you you okay, yeah and one more thing sir sir i am a javascript developer okay how, how do i go into the gaming zone like game developer how can i what is the road map sir okay uh, how old are you do sir 21 21 have you uh, finished your uh, graduation yes sir yes sir so uh, if you are well versed with uh, javascript you could have a look at 3.js Babylon JS, Play Canvas. These are some fra- fra- uh, frameworks that are used to make H5 games, HTML based. So web game. Uh, these are the frameworks that are used to make uh, web based games. So if you are well versed with uh, JavaScript, then you can get into uh, these frameworks like 3 JS, Babylon JS, or uh, you can use an engine named Play Canvas, which also uses JavaScript. You can not only just design games or develop games. You can also design. In, uh, experiences so you could also create some ar or uh, vr simulations on web so play canvas also supports that so if you know javascript that is a huge advantage for you and if you are looking for uh, some opportunities you can get in touch with me uh, i'll perhaps we can have something uh, in the company as well for you okay thank you sir um dev Okay, I'll also give comments to Nisha Sahu. Hello, good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. Uh, sir, uh, my question is that, uh, sir, how can we implement uh, AR, VR in gaming model? Uh, as we know that the the gaming model which includes VR or AR is very costly. So, how can we implement, sir? As as I told before that we have first have made a game which is helpful for the students or helpful for for children. so my idea is to how to implement vr so that uh, now uh, we can learn something and we can play effectively how, do you know any programming language do you like work on vr yes, sir now i am working on c++ you are working on so c++ i am learning sir. okay okay so once you are done with c++ as i said the best resource is unity you can design a 360 degree mm-hmm. Uh, models or uh, 360 degree environments in there you can that can be perfectly used for uh, uh, ar and vr development as well for the beginning and not for the beginning you can also make scalable apps with unity for ar and vr and even if you don't have a headset uh, what unity also offers is have you heard of google cardboard yes sir so what you could do is uh, unity also uh, helps you uh, export your app into something which which could be exported onto the mobile so if you want to uh, 
uh, make applications and aren't ready to invest something right now on VR headsets, what you could do is you could buy a Google Cardboard or any uh, other Cardboard VR and you could export the app into the mobile and add your mo mobile into that particular uh, Cardboard headset. To go and if you have a uh, good app, uh, there is a huge demand of VR simulation, VR training in the market. So if you have a good app, I definitely, I confidently feel that you would be able to provide services in the market if you confident about your idea. And once you are, uh, you have done that, you can earn some amount and buy Oculus. Oculus is like twenty one thousand right now. Uh, you yes. VR used to be like. Uh, costed in lakhs, but this year Facebook changed the whole game. You can buy a standalone VR in just twenty one thousand. So if you can manage that uh, first up, then you could also switch on to uh, uh, Oculus. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yes, uh, sir. My question is: If you like make a game, like me and my friends make a game, and uh, how do we find a publisher for the game? Like we 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 want to make a PC game and we want to publish it on Steam. So how okay. do we find a publisher? So okay. do we, and one more thing: uh, Do we have to find a publisher beforehand, or we make finish the game first and then we look for distributor or publisher? Got it, got it, got it. So that's a nice question. I I think you are into game development. So. Uh, from my personal opinion and for, from my personal experience, you should be looking for a publisher once you have a proof of concept of a game ready. You Generally, you can also look for publishers when you have a GDD ready, but that doesn't have many chances of converting. But once you have a prototype of a game ready or like a 10 minute gameplay ready or a five minute gameplay ready, and you can show to the publisher that the game is really well and uh, you they should be uh, interested in publishing it. So that is the particular point of time that then when you should approach a publisher. So make a prototype of the game, make a proof of concept of like a gameplay of five to 10 minutes and then reach out to the publishers. Uh, how to reach out to the publishers? See who are the publishers in the PC uh, market. Uh, don't reach out to the top ones directly. Reach out to the middle ones because they, they will be providing uh, a much better feedback because a lot of applicants don't come to them. They generally go to the higher ones. So the reach out first to the middle or the lower end uh, publishers, take feedback, implement it. If they are ready to publish, you can go ahead. If you are implementing that feedback, uh, you can have a first feedback, then you can also approach top publishers. But uh, a counter question to you, why are you looking uh, to get into PC gaming? Or is it just something that interests you? Uh, sir, I have a day job and like colleagues okay. at the job, we are interested in gaming. So. Got we it, do a little it. bit of development on the side. So we have got developed a few mobile games. Now we want to get into like uh, PC games. So got we it. are taking a time frame of like two, three years and mm -hmm. we will work together. And on the side, we want to do this work. So got it. Got it. Got it. yeah, yeah. So if, from that question, I would like to share some things with you guys. So like he said, he would like to take two to three years. Generally, if you are making a game, I, I don't want to discourage you, but generally if you're making a mobile game or a hyper casual game, then that is generally you get the first feedback in like seven to 10 days. But if you are investing two to three years of your time, you should first have a prototype of that game, test that out in the market and then continue working on it. Because if you are really in love with the idea, but after two or three years, it doesn't work out, then your two or three years will not result in like, a, 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 you, you won't get benefit as per your expectations. So make a 10 minute gameplay, test that out in the market, take feedback, and then continue working on that game. Otherwise, uh, I would personally suggest not to work and uh, kill that project because it doesn't, uh, it, it isn't really monetary beneficial or your, uh, it isn't worth spending two to three years on a game that yeah. you won't end up working in the market. So have a 10 minute gameplay, uh, test it out in the market and then uh, go on to developing it further. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm unable to hear you. Can you come again? Hello? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it's medicine lagging or something. Are you saying something? 
Hello, sir. Hello. So is it important to learn the fundamental of 2D art if I'm just working on 3D software like Blender or Cinema 4D? I don't particularly think so. Uh, yeah, I think you can learn 3D art from scratch only. Yes, sir, I was wondering if 2D art is that important or not. If I should invest my time in it or not. In it or not. Directly get into 3D art and I think uh, 3D art has a better potential. Uh, so yeah, you can start learning 3D art directly. There are no worries. You don't need to uh, learn 2D art first. You can directly jump into 3D art. Thank you, sir. Uh, Hello. I don't know who's speaking. No, you aren't. Man. Uh, can I... Yeah, you can type it out. Hello, sir. Yeah. You... Sir, uh, how do you deploy a game on Play Store? Or, like, how do you find an audience platform, sir? Okay. So generally, what we generally do is, uh, we first make a prototype or a game, we export it and then upload it on Play Store. What we generally do is, to have games, uh, to have users on the game, there are two or three ways. First is ASO, that is App Store Optimization. So App Store, like similar to SEO, where is, wherein you uh, list your website, uh, rank your website on Google. Similarly, there's a concept known as ASO, that is App Store Optimization in uh, game development or if you get are getting into apps we uh, customize our app in such a way uh, where we could also get organic downloads that is the first way that is not the major way the major way and the main way uh, is to acquire customer through ads uh, there are various uh, platforms you can use facebook ad network you could use app loving you could use iron source or if you have a game that is streamable you could also approach influencers to play that particular game on uh, their stream and then uh, the people watching that stream could uh, end up downloading your game. But you would have to invest something initially. Uh, so that is why uh, publishers are very important. So if you have a good idea, what publisher uh, publishers do is they invest in your idea and they invest in your game. What they do is they acquire users for you. And if the game is uh, ending up profitable, they uh, invest more and more amount. Uh, until the game has reached uh, almost all of its audience and you get a profit out of that. So the best way I think uh, to acquire users is from ads. And if you initially are starting out, you should get in touch with some publishers. Mm, yeah, okay. Are there any more questions? Okay. Um, yeah. Sir, I had one more question. Uh, yeah. Can you tell how PUBG made its case study, sir? Like to acquire this global market. Mm -hmm. Can you tell how was their approach, sir? Uh, I don't exactly know what was the marketing strategy of PUBG, but as far as I've heard, uh, they first came out with a, a PC game. So PUBG was first a PC game. It is still now a PC game. It started out as a PC game. Uh, a guy named, uh, I don't remember the exact name, but a guy had an idea. He approached a publisher. The publisher really liked the idea. They uh, further developed the game, uh, launched it on PC. The response was really good and they ended up launching it on uh, mobile, launching it as in promoting it on mobile, uh, showing some ads on mobile. And that is what their strategy was. That is the general strategy of a game developer. If you are an individual company or independent company or an independent game developer, generally, if you have a game, you should approach a publisher because to acquire customers on these games, millions and millions uh, are spent to acquire customers and then generate profit later on. And obviously in the beginning, you cannot uh, invest so much. So that is why a publisher is very important. So that must have been the strategy for uh, player unknowns uh, battleground. Um, so yeah, uh, is there any more questions or I guess we should end it here? Like uh, it's been like nearly one hour. Cool, I guess. Uh, so thank you, Anugra, for being here. It was great, uh, great to have you. And it was so informative and helpful to many people. And also we'll uh, have you again uh, sometimes for some other topics. Sure, yeah. sure. Good luck to have you. Yeah.
Now, uh, thank you everyone for attending. So I'll end the meet soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anugrah, so much. Sure, thanks. Uh, let me just put my ID if somebody wants to get in touch with me. They can. Oh, yeah. I have your Instagram like, copied. Uh, I'll just share okay. it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I will Thank share you. it at the starting of the year. So anyone who wants to connect with them on LinkedIn, uh, I'll share the link on the chat. You can. All right. Thank you, Yash, for having me. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, 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 everyone. So I'll end the meet in a few seconds.